Um, the Film Study Center uh, was established, was founded in 1957 by actually this person that you see uh, on the image, his name is Robert Gardner, um, and he was both an anthropologist and um, an ethnographic filmmaker. And the Film Study Center kind of like comes as the visual arm of the Peabody Museum, uh, which is a museum for archaeology and ethnology at Harvard. So it really starts like, so nonfiction filmmaking at Harvard really starts as being um, anthropology centered. But at the same time, it comes um, in a space where it comes in relationship to three other uh, spaces at Harvard. Uh, what today is called the Department of Art, Film and Visual Studies the, and the Carpenter Center, which is the only building by um, Corbusier in North America that is actually trying to like function as this um, meaning place for art, for the visual arts research and design. Um, and so the Film Studies Center kind of like emerges at the core of the conflation between these three places. It's a little bit about like this idea of like working in nonfiction documentary, but also working always in an interdisciplinary way that draws as much from the practices of ethnography and um, anthropology as it draws from the visual arts, from design, from other forms of filmmaker, of filmmaking. What really forms the core of um, what we do every year is our community of fellows. We have Three, three types of um, residential fellowships, um, some from people, for people who are at Harvard, so the FSC Harvard fellowships, the Radcliffe fellowships and the uh, Left fellowships where we open up um, the sort of like group that we work with to people from both the Boston community and the international community. What we do every week is basically that we meet um, in this nonfiction workshop. Um, most times we meet at least twice a month to discuss um, fellows works in progress um, and to do critiques of their, uh, of their work that they're developing. And sometimes we invite other filmmakers to join us. We've been trying to also open up um, what we do to other filmmaking practices. So we kind of like try to both stay within what we're making and also keep opening it up to very, very different forms um, of nonfiction filmmaking. So then the question becomes so much more different because it becomes how can uh, research-based processes and practice-based processes inform one another uh, and be productively put into a conversation without being conflated and without becoming an illustration of one another. So what <laughs> brings us together um, is this idea that um, we are super interested in creating methodologies for our own work that are rigorous uh, when there's no, it's not, it's not like there's no historical precedent, but there, there aren't historical precedents that can serve everyone's work in a place like this, right? And so it's almost like everything you make and everything you defend, you have to situate it within the methodology of your own discipline and this sort of like practice-based methodology that allows you to operate between writing and making. Um, the Sensory Ethnography Lab is a place where a lot of the questions I've been um, talking about is kind of put into practice, right? It's a place that got started uh, by a bunch of anthropologists who were suspicious of this idea that um, anthropological writing could come to terms um, with an experience, with a direct experience of reality. And they wanted to really focus on what was untranslatable, uh, what was what was uh, not possible to put into, into language. Where did language fall short of ac accounting for this estranged um, distance and, somewhat, some, and sometimes very uh, close encounters we have uh, with each other, with the people that we work with? Um, how could technology then be brought in not to sort of like completely close that immediacy um, or to um, make us forget um, that it's there, but actually to heighten it, to translate a sense of, uh, of estrangement. How can um, the, the estrangement we have uh, when we encounter reality be technologically translated? Uh, David also like, uh, he commented a bit of, uh, if you have like, uh, if you can comment on the fact that like when uh, an artwork like such a film or 
would be would be considered like academic published work. Okay. I, should it be? I don't know if it should yeah, be. Yeah, that's that's know. okay. That's the question. What do you think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I I'm not convinced it should be considered academic published work unless they really want to make a film. You know, if you want, there's you know academic writing. Yeah, and I always tell my students it's just like academic writing has been around for a really long time. So if you want to do academic writing, you should just do it and do it well. You know, there's no no reason to think that you should do a film just because everyone else you know is making a film. Right